uh, it's just awesome. So I don't know if you guys, any of you guys have a blog? Hi. Tiff, can you hear me yet? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Awesome. I, I finally got my computer to work. So I, you know, I'm sitting in like the rental car terminal, you guys. So, yeah. So I'm sorry. I missed the first like part of that, but hi. Thank you. I'm glad you can hear me now. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So do any of you guys, I know Tiff, of course, is getting started with her blog in a few months into the, any of the rest of you have blogs or are you just interested in blogging? I, I have, I started, mine's not finished yet. So I have one I that um, I actually hired somebody to That's do awesome. just kind of get it set up. So, but I haven't published it. I haven't, I've sort of been dragging my heels because it feels a little overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, if I publish that, then it's like, it's real. But I really do want to publish it and I really do want to get it going. So that's yeah. where I am right now with that. So it's okay. in the works. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I went through a lot of that too with the, just the, the fear of one, I mean, I had no clue what I was doing when I first started. And a lot of days I feel like I still don't. But then just the fear of like putting yourself out there for me personally, that was something I, really had to overcome was what are people going to think like specifically my friends and my family I knew nobody that had a blog and I was um you know it's just a very vulnerable thing in a lot of ways you're putting your ideas and your yourself out there and so overcoming that fear and I've written a few posts about that was a huge thing for me personally and something to be honest with you there's still days I, I struggle with that and still like oh if I you know is this post good enough or what are people going to think and it can be competitive so um so I can definitely relate to that but don't let the overwhelming feeling of it like scare you away because there's so much info out there and if I can do it then anybody can do it for sure so yeah I appreciate that because I love I just love the idea that our blog is like ours and it's kind of yeah you know, we have control over that and and it just feels like it's a, a cool it would be a really cool thing not only a cool thing to do but just I don't know a, a way to really reach more people and yeah yeah um that's the thing for me and I know I've talked to Tiff about this a lot it's just the hustle and the time that goes into a blog and I think when you're deciding if you want to do it or not there's like one or two ways you can go you can either have a blog that's uh, a more of a personal blog and more of like an online not diary but much more of a personal type thing or you can have a blog that you're hoping to turn into a job one day or maybe an income generating uh, stream for you so um, I think those two things go you know determine which way you're gonna go but for me like when I started, I knew I want to do this to make a little bit of extra money. Like I said, my goal was $300 a month. And, um, but it never felt like work for me. Like I just, I loved it. I spent so many late nights and days and I mean, that's what I wanted to do is be blogging. I just truly, truly enjoyed it. And I think honestly, that's a big piece of blogging is there's so much time and hustle that goes into it and patience. It's like, I always say it's like planting a little seed and you have to water it and, and let it grow. It's not, you're not going to have a huge, you know, amount of page views overnight. And so, um, that patience, you know, it's hard to, to bear through that sometimes, but if you love what you're writing about and you love what you're doing, you know, like I said, it never felt, it's never really felt like work to me. I've just, I truly love, love blogging. So Did you, did you already talk about content development, like how much you had already written before you published your page, or did you just get going with a few things and then you published and then you just kept adding? Um, so when I started my blog uh, or started developing it, I was writing a few posts here and there, and then I was just putting those um, up publishing them but it wasn't li live of course nobody could see them so by the time I actually hit launch and publish so the whole world could see I think I had five posts published and ready to go um, there's some bloggers that will tell you to have more like 10 or 15 ready to go but one I wasn't that patient and two I don't know that's gonna make a huge difference for you um, so I had five 
pretty decent post. Like I said, it's all DIY and home decor stuff. So I have a couple of DIY stuff and other random, you know, a few other random things. And that was it. And then my first live post was my Christmas tour, which like I said, was, was awful. It was terrible. Um, but that's what I started with. And then, and I think the idea behind that is that the more content you have, when people come to your blog, they'll bounce around a little bit. Um, but the big key is getting that content on Pinterest. Pinterest is huge, huge, huge for bloggers and by far the most important social media platform any blogger can focus on, in my opinion. And so as soon as you can go live and you've got, you know, all those posts to send out on Pinterest, that's huge. And I always... I'm kind of rambling about the post, but um, I always think of posts as like little worker bees. So think of each post you write as a bee that's going to go out, you know, into the fields of the world and internet and Google and all of that. And they're bringing you back page views. And the more worker bees you can send out, the better your page views will be. And so it's not going to be one or two posts that make, you know, a huge difference on your blog. It will be a handful of them, but to continue to grow over time, it's all these little posts that are going out and this one's bringing you 100 views and this one's bringing you 400 views and this one, maybe you have five that are really popular and they're bringing you in more. So the more content you can create, quality content, the better your page views will be, of course, because you're sending that out to Pinterest. So, yeah. What, what did I already miss about Pinterest? What did you already talk about there? Did you talk about having like a, a blog, like personal page versus, or versus your personal page or what's your recommendation there? Yeah, Pinterest, um, I didn't talk about Pinterest in the beginning. I was just kind of covering my background, but Pinterest is huge for, for any blogger. Um, and even if you're not a blogger, whatever it is that you're trying to get traffic to, Pinterest is the key place to do it. Um, by far, like I said, it's, it surpasses page views for me over Facebook and Instagram any day. Um, can't, I mean, easily. So what I recommend for Pinterest and what I personally did, I knew nothing about Pinterest or how to grow a following when I started, um, my blog. I, it was like, I never, I was not somebody that ever pinned, so I had no idea what to do. But what I learn from a few others is that you should go in if you're trying to use Pinterest for whatever your business is or whatever your blog is clean up your board so that every cover on your board matches with what your brand is um, organize your boards to where your best most relevant boards are at the top of your feed on Pinterest and then only pin content that's related to your brand. If you want to pin, um, you know, random stuff that's not related, just put it on a private board so your followers don't see it. And then just pin and pin and pin and get as much content uh, on your feed or on your Pinterest boards as possible that matches up with your brand. And if you see viral pins, make sure you're pinning those, pin, pin stuff that's really good. Um, so I've been working on Pinterest now about a year and a half, really dedicated. Um, and I'm just over, I think I'm at 31,000 followers on Pinterest and it's purely hundred percent from pinning content that relates to my brand, being very specific with that. And, um, like I said, if you're going to focus your attention anywhere on social media, do it on Pinterest because I'll tell you what, I, Instagram is not what it used to be. Facebook is is Facebook and um, you know Pinterest is where you can it's like sending a line out with bait and you're reeling in those page views with each pen if it's a good pen um, and that's another thing with that I didn't really touch on was just being very um, very careful with the photos you put out and your brand and your content and all of that because of course it's all visual on Pinterest so the better your pen is the better your image um, and I typically try to make my images pretty big on Pinterest vertical as, a, as opposed to horizontal. Um, if I'm making like a pinnable graphic, that's like five ways to style a tiered tray. Um, it'll be vertical and it'll be like 800 pixels by, uh, like 1300 ish. And so it's nice and big. Um, so just those kinds of things will, will get more, more pins. And then I was telling Tiff the other day, 
Um, one of the smartest things you can do, whether you're a blogger or not, is try to get yourself on group boards. I don't know if you guys are familiar with group boards on Pinterest or not, but those are huge for just growing your following and getting more repins on your content. And so the way you would find those, honestly, the way that I find most of the group boards I try to join is I go to somebody that's established in my niche. So like there's a couple of bloggers that have huge Instagram followings and I'll go to their or Pinterest, I mean, I'll go to their Pinterest feed and I'll just scroll through their boards and any board that has the little, you know, multi-person icon on the lower right side, I think is a group board and you'll click on that and that'll generally tell you how you can join the board. And it's usually as simple as emailing the owner of the board and saying, hey, this is what I pin, this is what my stuff looks like and they'll look at it, they'll see if you pin crap or if you pin good stuff and if you pin good stuff, they'll more than likely let you in. When I very first started my board or my Pinterest with the little vintage nest theme and all that, I made a group board for myself and I called it All Things Home and I started just solely inviting people that I knew were in the home decor world and that over time has grown and grown and I would say definitely do the same thing for you guys is start boards yourself that are group boards and invite people. Don't just wait on other people to invite you because the whole idea is a group board's going to get more views, more traffic, more repins, all of that. So that's a huge spot to devote your time to. I think for any blogger, but especially in the beginning, um, that's where I spend most of my time in terms of social media. Yeah. What other questions do you guys have? I, I don't want to ask other things that you guys might have covered in the first five minutes that I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cover much. I just went through background and okay, good. started on Instagram and yeah, you know, that kind of basic stuff. So I haven't gotten into anything too specific. Okay, fair enough. Um, Felipe, um, what other questions do you guys have before I just jump back in? Um, I think for me, I'm just at the point of I have my domain and everything on Bluehost, and I'm looking for a template and was just wondering if there are certain features that are like must have features for a template as far as um, I don't even know like what do you just pick one and anything's okay or are there certain features that going back in time that you wish like okay starting up the blog here are the key things that you need to make sure that you have yeah uh, that's a great question I when I got started I bought my theme from a company called 17th Avenue designs and um, I chose it based off of uh, a clean, uh, you want like a really clean look, I think personally that goes straight into your blog posts. So there's a lot of themes out there that will um, give you like a landing page that you then have to click off of to get to the blog and those are great. But what I've heard from brands um, that I've worked with is they want to see the landing page be your blog. So they want to jump on and see that the blog content. Um, if you look at my blog, there's a, a sliding header and then there's a couple of little, um, you know, icons in the middle and then it's straight into my most recent posts. And that's even a little bit more busy than some people have their blogs. I think, uh, like I said, just based off feedback I've got from uh, brands is they want it to be as clean looking as possible and the blog be the main landing page so you don't have to click around a lot to get to that content. If, if the blog is, you know, the meat and potatoes of your website, I guess. So I would say look for, you can look on Etsy. There's, I don't know if you've, you've looked around much, but Etsy is a great spot to start. Um, with affordable themes. Like I said, mine was 17th Avenue. I wouldn't, they had a pretty theme, but I wouldn't recommend them based off their customer service. Um, who I'm with now, I got my theme from a company called Restore, Restore 316 Designs, I believe. Tiffany that's used them. Great. Yeah, I used them too. Um, and that's, that's where I got mine from now. And I think they're pretty affordable. I mean, all in between a couple different things, I think you're maybe like, between 80 and 150 dollars or something like that um, so there's a lot of affordable options so I would just choose one that is pretty and streamlined and you know clear and uh, easy to read that kind of thing not too cluttered um, you're gonna probably eventually put ads and stuff on there so right now I think 
just clean and crisp blogs are, are the thing. But that's totally your call too. So, and I enjoyed that. I know Tiffany, it was such a headache. I felt so bad you had struggles with getting your setup. But I, you know, I, once I had my theme and they, you know, you download these instructions that walk you through how to do it exactly. I just worked night and day until I had it set up. I just loved doing that part of it. So yeah, but there's a ton of options out there. I, I'm just technically challenged. So that was half of my issue. Once I actually like understood like, like the difference between like WordPress and then getting my theme and what the framework yeah. was, like I had to do a little bit of research to really understand what I was installing and what the heck I was doing. Yeah. Then from there, it was much better. And I'm still learning. I mean, I'm certainly not proficient. I mean, I kind of honestly, what I've had mine going since October or so. And honestly, in May, I finally figured out like how to, you know, put banner ads, like placement ads and stuff. And I'm like, I can't believe it took that long, but it's also like the labor of love thing. Like Sarah was sharing, like I just had to finally sit down and have a really devoted like hour to figure out where, what ads I wanted was going to place. And, and I did mine like, because um, being an Amazon affiliate, it was like one of the main things that Sarah recommended to me to like, just kind of get going to have like some level of income generation. And so I just placed Amazon ads and it's working great for right now. And, you know, and I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about ads and how other things sometimes get placed on your page and that kind of stuff. But yeah. the whole point be like, just be patient with it. And you have to like kind of test where things go. And that was, it was kind of a trial and error thing for me a little bit to really just understand the placements and kind of the blog language or the website language yeah. versus where it is and actually where it lives on your page. But you can always change it. Like nothing's permanent, which, you know, is the beautiful part. You can always change stuff. So that kind of takes the pressure off of like feeling like you screwed it up, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you're talking about Google ads, which you can copy and paste a code to put in. It's super simple. The one tip I would say for that tip is make sure that you're putting um, ads, like you said, in your header, but then also in the post. I don't know if you're doing that, but in the post is something I didn't discover for like four or five months into it okay. because sidebar ads aren't going to pull up on a mobile a device they're only gonna pull up on a desktop or a tablet I believe but if somebody's on your site from their phone which is where I get a lot of my traffic a sidebar ad doesn't generate isn't gonna show up and it won't generate anything for you so make sure you're getting those in text ads you're putting those in okay, that's um, great advice. yeah but as far as ads go Google Ads is where I started you can start that from day one and it's really as simple as a copy and paste code that you put in um, wherever you want the ad and uh, if I remember right there's a couple tutorials on the Google Ads page it'll show you how to do it but it's really very simple and I recommend doing that right from the get-go because then any I mean even if it's a you know I started out with 4,000 page views my first month and I mean even if it's five ten bucks you're getting from those ads it, it adds up and it's something um, ads are a tricky thing because when you're under, I believe a hundred thousand page views a month, you're kind of doing your ads on your own. I don't know of any other, I can't recommend any other ad network other than Google ads that I would suggest if you're under that mark. Um, I think that's the best, most reliable spot to go. I'm sure there's others, but I didn't use them. Um, and I know most bloggers start there. Once you get over 100,000 page views a month, you can apply to um, lots of different, well, the main ad network that a lot of bloggers seek out is called Ad Thrive. That's the one that I'm on. Once you get to 100,000 uh, views a month, you can apply to be in. And if they accept you, they control all your ads. It's amazing. So any ad you see on my site, I have nothing to do with other than I um, discuss with them how many ads I want, if I want pop-up ads, if I want, you know, all of that jazz. But as far as the content of what the ad is or anything like that that you see on a, a blogger's page. Um, like I said, they probably didn't choose that ad specifically. It's just there because of their ad network, but it's amazing because they do all of that for you. And the ads is uh, really for me a, a huge chunk of my income that I get each month is those ads that I have on the site. So 
something to think about when you're just getting started. I definitely plug those in and get going with that as soon as you can, for sure. What would you, so you're saying income for you is really coming from those types of ads. Like when you first started, what, what would you say some of the income drivers were or page view drivers were if it was anything outside of Google? Um, income drivers when I first started was Google ads and Amazon affiliates. So when I, um, like Tiff just mentioned, I don't know if you guys are all in Colorado. Some states don't allow Amazon affiliates. Um, there's only a couple. It's kind of weird, but um, anybody can be an Amazon affiliate. You can start right away being an Amazon affiliate. And what that means, I don't know if you guys are even familiar with what that means, but basically it means you can get a link that's attached to your associate account and anybody that purchases anything from Amazon by clicking that link. I mean, it can be a link for workout shoes that takes them to Amazon and they purchase kitty litter or whatever it is, you're going to get a hit for that. It doesn't have to be that specific item. So that works um, really well. It's awesome. And anybody can do that. So when I first started, I had the Google ads and Amazon affiliates running. And anytime I had anything I could link to Amazon in a post or I could do a roundup shopping post, I did a lot of you know, 10 great farmhouse finds from Amazon under $50, those types of things. Those are all Amazon affiliate links. Somebody clicks on those. And like I said, no matter what they buy from Amazon, if they got there from your link, you're going to get a chunk of that. So that's how I earned the mo most of my money in the very few first months. And I'm talking, it was pretty minimal. Um, I think maybe like anywhere from 25 to $50 a month from Amazon and comparable to that for my ads. And then um, as I've grown, the ads have, you know, I was able to switch over to that larger ad network once I got past 100,000 page views a month. And that's been a huge um, increase in income for, for me for the ads. And then I was also able to get into reward style, which is a, just another affiliate network. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I don't want to overwhelm you, but it's just another affiliate network that opens up the same type of partnership with Amazon, it opens up that with tons of, of retailers, Nordstrom, Target, Wayfair, Overstock, where pretty much anything you can find a link for, you can get an affiliate link for it. And that, for me, is a huge, huge income generator. Much, I mean, a lot of months, it's more even than my ads. So um, I spend a lot of time making sure that I put affiliate links in and that I'm uh, you know, doing shopping posts and roundup posts and you guys on, if you're on Instagram, you're probably seeing the like to know it stuff and all that crap. And I personally with Instagram, it's not working for me. Like to know it isn't working for me. Um, but that hasn't slowed down my income from my reward style. So that's it. Those are two major income generators for bloggers. A third would be creating a product. So, um, there's a lot of bloggers out there that are making, like I mentioned, Abby at Just a Girl, Just a Girl on Her Blog, I believe is what it's called, has a ton of products. And by that, I mean eBooks and eCourses and different little challenges that she sells that are things that she's compacted into this nice little PDF you can download for $20. And um, a lot of big bloggers will make those kinds of products and they make great money from them. I mean, she's one that I uh, really admire for the, just the creativity she has with coming up with stuff. She has one that's all about getting started as a blogger and I think it's like 129 bucks. And she, I don't know if Tiff, you've ever looked at her blog, but she used to publish income reports every month mm -hmm. and the amount of money she was making from those types of things just blew my mind. Yeah. It was impressive. Yeah. She's insane. So, uh, so yeah, that, those are three main things. And then the fourth would be sponsored posts. So that's a, uh, you know, something that when you get to the point where you're starting to generate more of a following on social media or your page views are getting to a certain point, you can start pitching brands to do some sponsored posts where um, those typically work where they will pay you a fee and give you the product um, that you're featuring. So uh, I did like a dining room post, for instance, with World Market and they, they pay you a fee, which is pretty much determined off of I mean, you set the fee, but if, you know, they don't think it's reasonable, they're not going to pay it, but it's based off page views and social media and all that. 
and then they give you the free product as well. Um, so you can do those types of things. I've also done posts just for free product. Um, but you know, all of those things kind of fuel into four main income streams that you can do to earn, to earn money. Um, and like I said, it just, it takes time to, to get to that point, especially with sponsored posts and stuff. But I mean, it's definitely within reach. So that's the cool thing about blogging. You're like the sky is the limit and it's just a matter of putting in the time and the, the energy and the hustle to it. So Sarah, can I ask you a question? Yeah, please. Um, so like going back to these Google ads, so were the, and forgive me if this seems really silly, but was the ad actually something that you were selling? Is it actually like a, um, good question. you know what I mean? So like I'm thinking about us as beach body coaches, what, what would an ad, a Google ad look like on our page kind of, you know it would I mean? be um, anything from what I, what I had understand and the way it worked on my site would be anything Google put targeted to that person on your site. So for instance, if I've been researching, you know, good workout shoes, all the ads I see, I don't know about you guys on all my pages I go to have to do with those workout shoes. So it's targeted to your audience. So it's just simply the code that's telling them what size I want this ad to be and where I want it to be. And that's it. So it will be targeted to whoever's looking at your blog. It's not going to be specific to um, what your brand is. Now you can make uh, shopping or I'm not even sure what it, it's called like a you might remember what it's called the you can make a, a an ad that has specific things in it that are related to whatever is in your post through Google Ads I never did that um, but you can do that I'm blanking on what it's AdWords. called Tiff have you something like the, the ad, Google AdWords is that when you can get really specific and it might not be the same one, but there is a, an option where you can get really specific with the keywords that you want to buy. And yeah, that's, great, uh, but probably not the same thing. No. Yeah. That's more for SEO. It's, um, I don't know. It's an ad that's targeted specifically that a lot of bloggers will put in at the end of a post. So if I write a post about tiered trays and I want to put in, uh, Blanking on the name, but you could put in an ad that has tiered trays from Amazon and it will, you know, you can say these are more options that I love. So it's kind of like um, a live shopping experience, I guess it's related okay. specifically to it. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, but the ads are totally based off of, from what I understand, what your audience has been looking at. The geo targeted ads? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I have a question for both yeah. of you, you and Tiffany. Um, so if you are doing something where you're selling a product or like you're putting together, say like a free, um, like a clean eating recipe book or whatever, how do you actually like set up how people pay you on that? And then my second part to that question is, Tiffany, do you know anything with the ads and the income generation blog wise is any of that um is it all compatible with being a beach body coach or is there anything that you can't do to like generate income on a blog while you're also a beach body coach so like two-part question like if i wanted to put because i have all these ideas of things that i could like content that i could sell but is that a conflict of interest while being a coach um, that's a really good question and um, because I haven't really been developing anything, I haven't read the compliance rules lately. Um, I know that they have done a bunch of updating and I know um, actually a blogger that I followed who had some really great printables for 21 Day Fix, they actually contacted her and asked them to, and I don't know if they like paid her to take them down or basically asked her to take them down. But I think they kind of consider it um, just like if you were a part of how they don't want you to be a part of two distribution networks anymore. They just want you to be a part of theirs. So um, I am sure that there are now some things around that. So, I mean, I think that if it is something that you develop and you own and has absolutely nothing to do with that would look like it was related to 21 day fix or any of their programs that I think is still okay. But if it in any way you can 
generate traffic to your page because you buy an ad board or you have some sort of SEO um, advertisement going on that would pick up on keywords to drive to you instead of to them. I think that's the stuff that they're trying to watch more closely. That makes sense. Yeah. So how do you go about um, actually setting that up for generating income? Is that something that's like a plugin? Sarah, you want to talk about shops? What I've seen other bloggers do in terms of paying for those types of things is a lot of it's just through PayPal. So um, I know several eBooks that I've purchased. It's just been a simple PayPal transaction where you can set up the payment um, on your end. If you're selling it, you can of course advertise it on your blog, put the downloadable links and all that there. And then when it comes to payment, it's just simply done through PayPal. So um, I haven't, I haven't gotten into launching any products. I'd love to one day, but um, I just haven't been there yet. But that's what I've seen. That's how I've purchased all of my eBooks that I bought. It's just a very simple pay through PayPal, easy breezy. It's not on your blog. It's not on your site. It's on secure. You know, nobody has to worry about anything. It's just straight through PayPal. And I think that there's some cool ways that you can like set up a shop. Like I was looking um, on Restored the other day, Restored 316, where we've got our themes in. Um, they actually had like a little section about like if you wanted to set up a shop on your website. So, I mean, that's probably worth investigating if that's something that you're thinking about doing or when you get ready to buy a theme or try to find a company that supports something like that. There's probably plugins and different things that you can use as a an in between but if that's a long-term goal for you and on your blog I mean I think that that obviously increases the user experience as well like if they have a cool shopping experience on your site and it's easy and it's secure that's going to be like the biggest thing um, then I think it's a feature that's definitely worth looking into or investing in yeah, yeah, definitely. Just look for a theme that has e-commerce ability. Um, like Tiff said, uh, Restored 316 offers several of those. So as long as your theme is compatible with that, you should be able to, when you're ready, um, implement something like that. And then if you purchase a theme and then, like you said, you went with a different company, how mm -hmm. transferable, like how easy is that to transfer? Yeah, um, that's a great question. So I was with my first theme for a year and then um, around Christmas time, I, my gift to myself was getting the new theme from Restore 316. And from what I hear, it's, it's doable to do on your own. There's tons of videos out there. But at that point I had a whole year of content and I was you know, pretty new into my pregnancy and I just didn't feel like doing it. So I paid Restore 316 um, to do it, which I think was only like $125, like super affordable. Um, so they went in, they, they put your site kind of on a deactivate thing for like 10 or not even, it wasn't even a day, it was like four hours. And then you get it back and I had to then go in and do a lot of cleanup and move stuff around and it was still kind of a hot mess, but like the theme and the body, the foundation of it was there that was already, you know, moved over. So, so yeah, that's definitely doable. Um, you can, you know, pay somebody to do that, which like I said, I had a lot of content. So at that point I'm like, I am not messing this up. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Tiffany, like we've talked about, it, I tend to get like paralyzed by perfection. Um, yeah. So I've had this, I purchased my hosting thing on a Black Friday special as well. And I still <laughs> have it set up um, because I'm like trying to make everything perfect. So that's why I've just wondered like, okay, should I just go with something? And then if I'm not happy with it, like transfer it or change it or so yeah cool. for sure yeah i would definitely you know get it out there and you can tweak it as you go i'm i'm still doing that with mine and then you could definitely upgrade to something bloggers change their themes all the time um, if you follow you know most bloggers change their theme every year or every two years just to freshen it up okay great yeah, and then my other question for anyone else that's on the call, I know I talked to Tiffany who gave me your advice on hosting service. I know you're using Bluehost and that's what Tiffany recommended for me. Do you have any advice on all of that for the other ones that maybe don't have anything set up yet? 
of why to go with Bluehost? I went with Bluehost. Um, that's a great question. I went with Bluehost because the other bloggers that I admired at the time had how to get started blogging tutorials, and that's it, where they said they started. So I didn't. The other one I know some bloggers use is GoDaddy, um, and I had had some experience working in a nonprofit with GoDaddy. I just didn't seem as legit to me as Bluehost. So that's just where I went. The prices were affordable and there was just good recommendations from other bloggers. I haven't had any issues with them, knock on wood. Um, but I know it's, I know that once you get to big time page views, I don't think Bluehost can support it. But I think if you're a mid-size and under blogger, Bluehost is a fabulous option. Okay, so what's your advice to the others listening about doing something like paying for Bluehost versus something free on like Blogger or something like that? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think it comes down to um, what you want your blog to do. You know, do you want this blog to be a blog that can grow and be something that can earn you money and an income? Um, or is it more of a hobby? If it's more of a hobby and it's not something you're, you're doing more than to say, hey, this is you know how, what we did for Tommy's birthday last weekend, check it out, then uh, Blogger is fine. Blogger is a great option. There's a lot of people that start on Blogger. But if you wanna make money um, and grow your blog and your page views and all of that, I truly think don't mess with Blogger because you're gonna have to go to Blue, something like Bluehost anyway to be able to have like your own URL. Um, so you're not, you know, littlevintagenest.blogger.com or whatever it is. Um, there's lots of people that I've talked to that said, just start on Bluehost and on WordPress if that's where you wanna go with your blog because you'll eventually have to switch over anyway. And I've heard that's more of a pain in the butt than switching themes. So it's totally your call not to say blogger is not great. Um, but if you really, in my personal opinion, if you're doing it to make an income and, and, and have it be something that can really grow, save yourself the hassle later down the road because it's, it's pretty, I feel like it's pretty affordable um, compared to some of them that are out there. So yeah, that's the advice I got and that's worked well for me. So. <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Mm. Aaron, you have anything? Kristen, anything else? Yeah, you know, I wanted to just comment on um, to you, Noel, about well, and to everyone, that idea of having a shop on your page. The company that I hired to set up my blog, they what they did on one tab is they linked it back to our Beachbody website. So, like that, you can go into that tab eventually when it's published. And like see, and then if they want, they're interested in something, they can go and it would link directly back to our Beachbody website. So that I just, I thought they asked, they're like, do you want that? Do you want them to be able to buy directly from your blog? And I thought, and or do you want to link it back to your website? And I thought, okay, let's just link it back to. Yeah, but that's an option too, I guess. I don't know how to set that up by any means, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really smart. Definitely, really smart. Oh, you know what? I want to ask you, Sarah, sweetie. Like, is are your posts on your blog only related to your brand, or like, do you throw in personal things about your your journey and and your life and whatnot? I mean, or is it only about your brand? Um, I would say that seventy five percent of what I post is DIY and home decor related, mm -hmm. um, and for the first year especially, it was it was even higher than that, like 95% just that, because the idea is that, um, you know, you want your blog to be about your brand and what you're really trying, what the, the heart of it is, mm -hmm. uh, because the more personal stuff you mix in, in my experience and what I've seen, the less likely you are to get a buy-in with people, to be honest. I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but in the beginning, especially like, and even on my Instagram page, I've tried to transition more to a mix of my personal life and this, you know, brand of home decor and DIY or whatever. Um, and it's a slow progression. So what I would recommend to you is to start out hustling on those, those key things you want your brand to be so that when somebody comes to your site, it's very clear, you know, this is about working out and meal planning and healthy living and, and, 
life as a healthy mom or whatever it is. And then as you build your following, I think it's key to share personal posts and it's key to, you know, be vulnerable at times. And so what I try to do is, um, you know, is incorporate some of that in my posts itself. So my first, the first paragraph in all of my posts, I generally, sometimes I jump straight into it. Sometimes it's just chit chat and I'll ramble about whatever pissed me off yesterday or whatever's going on in my house or whatever. You know, we had a fiasco with our dishwasher, our dishwasher in our fridge recently. So I'll ramble about those things. And I think that's really key is remember when you're writing, you're writing to people, you're not writing for robots and I feel like so many blogs are so boring because people forget that you know it's like write like you and I are talking right now and you'll have a more engaged face and something I've been really grateful for is um, you know I've had followers that are engaged with me on my blog and comments um, and in emails and stuff like that because I feel like I'm you know I just write like I'm talking and that's key so well, kind of a, a rambling answer to it, but incorporate those posts once you've established a solid base and they know what to expect from you and then they'll start to want to know more about you and you can do that carefully and, you know, selectively, but in your post itself, let your personality come out. Don't just be like, this is how you do the sign and, you know, this is step one and this is step two and just, I think, I think that's a big piece of it. Should let your personality shine in your posts. Cool, thank you. I'm rambling. I no, ramble. No, you're not. It's really helpful. Yes, it's good stuff. Hey. All right, you guys, we had about five ish minutes. Anybody else have <laughs> any other burning questions or hot topics? I have a question. Um, well, first of all, I want to apologize if you guys could hear me negotiating with my daughter earlier to go to bed and singing her a bedtime song. Um, but my question, Sarah, I just wanted to find out how many hours a week um, do you devote to your blog? And like, have you always had the same amount of time that you put into it? Or how has it changed? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, right now, I would say an honest estimate on my blog is probably 30 to 30 to 50 hours a week that I spend. Um, I post though four to five times a week and a lot of what I post is stuff I have to create. So that's kind of the, um, the bitch of it in DIY and home decor is I have to create something and spend time developing that and then photographing that and then writing that, you know, so there's a lot of that that goes into it. Um, so between content creation, photography, editing, all of that, I would say it's probably 30 to 50 hours, but that wasn't always that way. Um, like I said, I, the first year I had my blog, I was working part time. And so I only did two posts a week when I started out on my blog. That was my goal, two posts a week and they weren't the greatest posts. Um, and so, you know, it just is something I've slowly developed into. And just like anything, it's almost like a marathon, like, the more I do it, the easier it is for me to create that content and to stay in that hustle mode. Whereas if I take a few days off or some time, it feels like it's harder to get going again. Um, so to be honest with you, that's, that's the amount of time. It's a lot of very early mornings, a lot of late nights, but it's, it's a full time job for me. Like I said, I'm, I make more than I did at my other job had I stayed there and worked full time and more than that. So it's something that, um, it's not just a hobby anymore. And so I take that, you know, it's, it's just, it's a job. Um, but I love it. Like I, so I say, if you're going to start a blog, blog about something you enjoy because it doesn't feel like work. Like I want to get the kids to bed and I want to have a quiet house so I can sit down and blog. Um, but you know, some days are easy days. Like yesterday I took my kids to the pool and I didn't do anything much on the blog all day. Um, and you'll get more efficient as it goes. So, you know, writing and editing takes less time than it used to and that kind of thing. Again, a rambling answer, but <laughs> it just depends, I guess. I don't know. No, so, that, that helps a lot. Thank you. So when you yeah. were working part-time and you were posting a couple times a week, how, what was that time like versus what you're spending now doing it full-time? Um, I would say, you know, it's probably 20, 20 hours a week, a lot of stuff on the weekend. I would say a typical post will take me five to six hours to create um, in terms of um, 
in, in terms of the editing the photos, the writing the post and doing all the back end stuff with plugging in the URLs and all that. I'm just, sometimes I'm more efficient and other times I'm not. So it just depends. Um, but in the beginning, it was like 20 hours, maybe 15 hours. Um, but a, a large part of that was learning curve. I mean, a large part of that was just figuring out how to edit. I started editing photos on PicMonkey, which you can get for $5 a month. And it's a great spot to start. And so it was just slowly learning the process. And so, like I said, I've gotten more efficient. Um, but I'm to the point where I'm trying to create four or five posts a week now. So that's why it's so many hours. Um, and I'm doing that. And I've been doing that since January, basically, because I know in two weeks, three weeks, I'm going to have a baby. And I, and I ain't got no content ready to go, <laughs> with that, which I should probably do. Um, so I'm going to be, it's going to be crickets on my blog. So like I mentioned earlier, those little worker bees, I'm hoping that I've been working on for the past six, seven months, all those posts will keep me floating along while I have some downtime. If I was smarter or had more time or energy, I would be creating more posts to publish while I'm, while I'm down and out. But um, I haven't done that yet. It's on my to-do list. <laughs> um, you look phenomenal for going to have a baby in like two weeks. Oh, thank you. I'm sitting so down so you can't see the massive. <laughs> Awesome. She's the cutest prega you'd ever see. I know. I can yeah. see it. <laughs> I can't even um, see the baby. This is number three for us, and I'm I'm definitely done after this. I think yeah. my husband and I always joke the miracle of childbirth is lost by the time you hit number three. It's like I'm just over it. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> uh, so but I'm, I'm hustling now, so hopefully when the baby comes, like I said, I can kind of stay afloat. Um, but that's going to be tough to not do anything during that time because I just love it. I enjoy it. It's, I mean, I know it sounds cliche, but it's just so fun. Like, it's so fun. I've always worked in nonprofit and in, like, government. I was a team court coordinator um, before I did the blog. And like I said, I have a master's degree. I was in a totally different mindset. And I was always about helping people and all this, like, crisis type stuff I was always in. And, you know, it just kind of is awesome to just be like in this world where I'm blogging about stuff that's just fun. It's just like, you know, it's just fun. I enjoy it. And I read blogs because if I had a bad day or if I need to an escape, I go to the blog and whoever's it is and I read it and it's just kind of fun. And, and that's what I hope people get when they come to my blog. So it's just, it's a cool world to be in and totally different than anything I've ever done. Awesome. Um, I think you better um, reach out to your other cousin, not not this one, but the other one that's creative and loves doing that stuff like you. Maybe you can, you know, hire her to put some cool stuff together and just to keep things going. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, right? I, love uh, that. I need a I need a couple writers for the blog to keep it going because I have no plan. <laughs> I should. You might, you know what, you might want to just, you know, put that out there. You might be interested, you know, might be interested in who you could, you know, source know. For, the, for the blog. <laughs> There's a lot of people that do that and plan ahead. It's like I said, I've just, I haven't got around to it yet. But. Yeah. Do you ever have um, guest writers? Have you done that on your page? Or I you been a guest that. writer? I did that one time. I had a girl that emailed me and wanted to put a DIY on my blog within like two months and I did it and I regretted doing it. Um, and my, my advice to you would be extremely picky about who you let put guest yeah. posts on your blog. Um, if it's someone that's legit and that you know is going to have great content and great photos then by all means go for it like i said there's a lot of people that when they know they're going to be like on a maternity leave they'll do that uh just be very selective with it i only did it that one time but i get probably three or four requests a week for people like hey you know i have this post i write about this and this i'd like to do a guest post on your blog and i don't even i don't even go there um so just be careful if you do that. I think it's great if you got the right people. There's a lot of big bloggers that do it. Like they'll have a recipe um, person that comes in once a month with a great recipe. Um, so those are great ideas. Just be very selective, you know, make it your brand. That's yeah. key. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, gang, everybody good? Anything else? Yeah, any other questions? I feel like there's so much we could talk about we didn't yeah. even scratch the surface so cool well you guys sarah thank you for doing this for us and i hope it was you know good information and informative information for you aspirational bloggers myself included um 
And, you know, Sarah, if you don't mind, if they have other questions, um, can I just direct them to you via the blog and they can just email you? Yeah, yeah. I love chatting about blogging. So any questions you have, anything, you know, SEO or social media related, let me know. I'll try to help as best I can. Cool. Awesome. All right. Thank you. You're the best. Yeah. All right, guys. Hope everybody has a great night. We'll catch up with you later. Bye. Bye, guys.